Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is your first time to my channel, then my Year of One is a quantity controlled low buy that I am on for the year of 2021, in which I can only buy one item per month, and it follows on from doing a no buy year in the year of 2020. So I am on a bit of a journey into trying to reduce my consumption and bring less stuff into my life and actually get the use out of things that I do have. So if content that is beauty and fashion focused but whilst trying to be mindful and not wasteful appeals to you then please do consider subscribing to my channel. But today's video is something a little bit different, uh, similar to last week's actually. So I know it's quite early for a lot of people to be talking about Christmas. Personally I love Christmas so I would start talking about it in July and talk about it the whole way through. That wouldn't be an issue for me. But as a lot of you know, this is the time of year when a lot of beauty releases start happening for Christmas and quite often if you don't get them at the time, they're not available come actual Christmas shopping season. So this week I am also doing a video about something that I'm receiving as a Christmas present that I have been given so that I can film this video and then I'm going to have to hand it back and I will unwrap it under the tree. But it is a Lisa Eldridge delivery. I did get one of the foundation sample cards. I'm not going to give this back to be put under the tree. I will actually use this but I'll probably do a separate video on it so I'm not going to use it in this video. If you are interested in hearing my thoughts on it, again hit subscribe and there will be a video of me using it and talking about it at some point. What this video is about are the other three items in this box. So I have got a lipstick, that is a lipstick I have on at the moment and it is Velvet Cinnabar and then I've got two lip liners so I got the matching Cinnabar lip liner and the Dragon lip liner because last year I got Velvet Dragon again for Christmas so those are the three products that we're going to discuss in this video. I'm going to do, I'm going to show you me applying them, I'm going to do swatches of them to compare to other Lisa Eldridge products and show you where it kind of sits within the range based on what I own, obviously I don't have her full range, um, and also some comparison swatches to other lipsticks that I own in similar colours to hopefully help you if you haven't bought it already, I think it is actually sold out already, unfortunately, um, but if you missed out, you know, it gives you some ideas of some alternatives um, that may already exist within your collection, and it just gives you an idea of the product if you want to wait out for it to relaunch, because she generally does carry things forward. Her spring launches I think tend to be her other formulas and then the autumn winter launch tends to be the velvets. She does also have a pop-up in Covent Garden which I think is either open now or opens very imminently um, when I believe all the colours are being sold so if you are near London you might not be able to get it online but you may be able to get it at the pop-up. One more thing to say actually before we get into it, if this is your first time to my channel you may be wondering what's going on behind me. I am in the middle of a bedroom makeover so I have a paint swatch over there um, but it's it's a paint swatch to see what colour I'm going to change this wall to. You may also see a lack of furniture, that's because most of my belongings are in boxes. This actually I thought would have been further along than it is but we had an electrician booked to come move some plugs and he never turned up and now we are waiting to rebook somebody else and there's no point in painting until the plugs have been moved because we're just going to paint and then we'd have to repaint so that's where we're at with that but yeah that's what the the paint swatch is about and now that I've told you that on with the content of the video. So the first thing is in terms of unboxing these products if you've had other Lee Seldridge products in the past there has been a packaging change this is the old box this is the new box the colour scheme is the same, new packaging is still white and gold, but it doesn't have the full gold sides, it's just got Lisa's logo on gold across three sides. The back is the same with the information, the tops of the boxes are the same, the bottom of the boxes are the same, and there is the same change on the lip liner, so this is an old lip liner packaging, this is the new lip liner packaging. So as you can see with the new packaging, if you had multiples, you would be able to line them up so that you could display the Lisa Eldridge logo um, across 
three boxes if you had three of the lipsticks or three of the lip liners. Obviously that isn't massively important but it's just something to note. First of all let's watch this is the Velvet Cinnabar lipstick. So that is one swipe, two swipes, three swipes. It is, it's a beautiful sort of cinnamon red shade, that sort of gorgeous reddy brown. Oh no, it just broke. It's it's fully just broken. It's it's just literally come straight out. Oh, okay. So I'm probably gonna just continue with this video because I want to get it up quickly for you guys. Um but I will email and let them know that this has happened because I've heard her customer service team is really good about these kinds of things so I will update in a future video what comes of that. Uh, okay that was really unfortunate that was not none of my other ones have broken so yeah this is hopefully not an indicator of anything sinister it's just been a bit bad luck but the colour is lovely so let's go on and swatch the lip liners. What a dramatic start. Oh. I'm glad I'd applied the lipstick in the, the application but before I swatched it so that I wasn't trying to apply it broken. So I got two lip liners. Uh, so this is the Velvet Cinnabar lip liner. So I will swatch that here. So I feel like, obviously I don't know yet because I've not done the swatches but I'm expecting to have similar lipsticks to this in my collection. I feel like the lip liner will be a little more unique. I feel like I love those sort of gingerbread shades like this so I, I am expecting to have similar lipsticks already existing in my collection but I feel like I've never quite had the perfect sort of gingerbready sort of cinnamon lip liner so uh, I think I'll get quite a lot of use out of the lip liner. And then the other one that I got because again I felt it sort of filled a hole was the Dragon Lip Liner. So I got the Dragon Lipstick last year and I have lip liners I can use with it but I'm a little bit anal. I like things that are matching sets. So I did like the idea of having the lip liner that was manufactured by the same uh, you know, company or person to match that lipstick. And again, I feel, I feel like I like those, that the shade that Dragon is, I'll just swatch it since we're talking about it, is really unique. Again, I'll link up last year's video where I swatched Velvet Dragon and did comparison swatches and I thought I was going to be able to do this within my collection and I actually couldn't. Um, but it's very much related. So that is Velvet Dragon on top there. So it's a bit more orangey and bright than this but it's, it is a very sort of again sort of cinnamony red shade but like a brighter cinnamon lighter red not the same kind of depth of red uh, as Velvet Cinema but again I feel like I've never found the perfect lip liner uh, so I was quite excited to have this join my collection so that is the Dragon Lip Liner, Dragon Lipstick, Cinnabar Lipstick, Cinnabar Lip Liner. So I feel like the Dragon Lipstick and Liner are not exactly, let's colour that in. Yeah, I feel like they're not exactly the same. I'm sure they'll match in well enough. Velvet Cinnabar. Swatch there. Then I've got Velvet Dragon, so you've already kind of seen them, but I think they're probably the closest. Then. Also, I've got Velvet Jazz, so you can see that's definitely still very different. Velvet Jazz is much more sort of almost plummy into the red. It's not got the same sort of brownie tones. And then just for the sake of putting it on, we'll do Velvet Ribbon up at the top, which is, as you can see, just completely different. So that is Ribbon, Dragon, Cinnabar and Jazz. I've also got Skyscraper Rose, but that's a pink, so I'm not even going to bother bringing that in. Moving on from showing it in comparison to its sisters within its line, Velvet Cinnabar there in the middle. So somebody actually commented on last week's video, which was the Dior unboxing video, that this shade looked like it might be quite similar to Cinnabar and this is the shade 858 Red Pansy Matte, which is part of the Dior 2021 Christmas collection. So I got it in the set, which is what that video was about, but I believe you can buy all of these individually as well so I will link the set and the individual down below if I can. So that is Cinnabar there and then just above it we'll do that is the Dior one so 
I would say the Dior one is a little less brown, you know, it's a little more red, but they are definitely in the same sort of ballpark. I've pulled two NARS Audacious lipsticks that I thought might be worth looking at. Again, this is Cinnabar here. This is Mona from the NARS Audacious line. So that I would say is more similar than the Dior because Mona's got more of the brown in it. But the formulas are very, very different. So the Audacious lipsticks are very wet, very creamy. Other than the fact that one has just broken on me, generally would say I would prefer Lisa's formula. I find matte lipsticks a bit easier to control so I feel like for me Lisa's would win out but if you own Mona already they are very very similar colour wise and you know if you prefer a creamier formula Mona might be a better shot for you. I've also brought out Olivia but I think Olivia is going to be more red so I'll do Olivia here. Yeah. So Olivia's again maybe closer to that Dior one actually. So this is Cinnabar, the Dior Red Pansy, Nars Olivia and Nars Mona. Pilled three from MAC that I think might be similar. So they are three of my favourites from MAC to be honest. So first of all we've got Marrakesh. Um, do you know what I think? Let's just do that next to that. Yeah Marrakesh is very, very similar. Definitely, I would say Marrakesh is even closer than Mona. Then I've got Chili. When Chili is in the family, but it's definitely more red. Hot Tahiti is not going to be the same at all, but I thought I would bring it over just to show you in case anyone owns it, because it's in the same sort of family. And if you look at it in the bullet, it looks really, really similar, but it's a glazed finish. So it's similar like they're definitely related but it's definitely not a dupe. I would say Marrakesh is the, the closest thus far. I've got two from Pat McGrath. The first is Guinevere. Again I think these will be more red than brown but I just thought it would be worth showing you in case you own these. So that is Guinevere so that's definitely got again a lot more red in it than this is Cinnabar here so not a dupe and then I've also got Vendetta from Pat McGrath. Definitely not the same at all. The last two that I'm bringing over are from Colourpop. So we'll do, I've got Who Run This, um, which I'll maybe just do here. So I think that's closer than a lot of these other ones, but it's not the same. I would say this has got more, again, just a touch brighter, a touch more red, but they're very close. And then I've also brought over Colourpop secret stash. Oh no, do you know I think that might be closer. It's a bit darker secret stash than Cinnabar like secret stash I think is almost more in line with Mona. It's a little bit darker but again very very closely related. So those are all the ones that I had that sort of felt similar um, but yeah I would say Marrakesh is the the closest and just for reference, I am in front of a window, um, so this is natural daylight, it's not particularly sunny, it is October in Scotland, so it's a little grey, so it's just kind of natural, sort of neutral daylight, it's not sunshine. So I think from looking at those comparison swatches, I would say if you own Mac Marrakesh, you probably don't need this, you know, they are very, very close. I'm going to email Lisa's team and be like, well, this is broken, so if they were to replace the broken one I would keep both. I don't think I would declutter either of them because I really I like both formulas but yeah if they can't replace the Cinnabar one and they refunded me now that I know that it's so close to Marrakesh I probably wouldn't repurchase it come the next round but my instinct is they'll probably replace it for me because they do have the pop-up coming and um, so I presume they've kept stock back specifically for the pop-ups. We shall see what comes of that. If they replace it, I'll keep both. If they can't replace it and they refund me for it, I would just keep Marrakesh. So we'll see what comes out of it. So the last thing I filmed was swatching the lipsticks on my arm and I started pulling my lip liners to see what would kind of match. And whilst I was doing that, I sent a DM to Lisa Eldridge's Instagram account and I got an answer at like literally seconds later from Jack from Lisa's team who said hello this is Jack from Lisa's team thank you for your message I'm so sorry to hear this has happened 
Lisa's beautiful true velvets are exceptionally high in pigment. This can cause them to be more susceptible to damage if they are handled incorrectly by couriers in their journey to you. Seems like it's something to do with pigment levels and maybe that just makes for a more delicate lipstick. It's not just that it's broken, if you can see that, it's not broken off, it's broken like below the the bit where it's set if that makes sense. Like you can see the black kind of rim. Um, so it's like below that that it's broken. It's not even that it's broken off of that, it's it's like it's kind of crumbled below that. So from what Lisa's team have come back and said it's to do with the, the high pigment levels makes this formula a little more susceptible to breaking. So that's just maybe something to bear in mind is that they are maybe a bit more vulnerable and you know potentially the further they're shipping to get to you the more likely they are to be knocked about or whatever. I'd sent a picture of it to show how it had broken so they said thank you for providing an image and um, can I please also take your order number and then said I will pass this over to customer service team who will go ahead and arrange a replacement to be sent out to you ASAP. So I am getting a replacement and they came back to me within literally like like they were typing their reply when I had finished typing my first message and was like taking the picture to send so it was such a quick response and yeah I'm getting a replacement so there's the the end of that which I thought I would have to update you on in a separate video. Good customer service right there. So now that that has been wrapped up um, let's get on to lip liner comparison swatches. Velvet Dragon I definitely don't have any dupes for um, so just to give you some comparisons with it. So this is Velvet Dragon there. The lip liner that I mainly use with those sort of orangey shades is this one from MAC. It's called High Energy. Um, I believe it has been discontinued. So that is that one there. Or the other lip liner that I would use is Patrick Taz. She's not from here, which is the sort of orangey lip liner, but it's actually in work. So I don't have it here to show you, but that is very, very close in shade to MAC Lady Danger. So although this is not a lip liner, it's a very accurate representation of the colour of the Patrick Ta lip liner. So just to give you that. So you can see the Velvet Dragon lip liner, which is this one here, is just that little more muted. You know, these have got, this one's a little brighter, this one's definitely brighter and it's also got more of that orangey pigment. Um, so the Velvet Dragon lip liner is a little more muted than my current lip liners that I would use. And for the sake of comparison, here is Velvet Ribbon. Because I feel like when I first watched this, I thought it was quite red, but it's, um, you know, if you think that this is the shade that matches in with a sort of classic red, it's, it's definitely not kind of as red as I thought it was on first swatch. So from there, the next shade that I thought of that might be kind of in between the two was MAC Brick which I would use with the likes of Chili, for example, which was one of the lipsticks that I showed you. Um, but that's not exactly the same either. So the next swatch that I will do is the Cinnabar lip liner. So you can see it's much brownier than Brick. So then leaning into that brown, I pulled out the Huda Beauty lip contour in the shade Vixen. But that's not quite, that's too brown. So you can see that there. Then pulling it back, Sorry, my memory card ran out there and had to go import footage and delete some space and whatever. So um, it cut out at when I was watching this, which is Spice, which is obviously far more neutral in, into the sort of nude territory. But if you compare it to Cinnabar, it's in the same family, but Cinnabar is darker than Spice. I've then also got MAC Auburn just to show you, which is fairly close um, in colour, not exact, but like... I would say one of the closest to Cinnabar. It is worth of course noting that these are mainly pencils that I've got whereas the Lisa Eldridge lip liners are a little more sort of creamy. MAC Fire Roasted is what I would tend to wear with Marrakesh. Definitely not a perfect match by any standard so you can see that's definitely very different to Cinnabar so I do think Cinnabar is going to really fill a gap in my collection. A slightly more on par similar formula is the Colourpop one. So this is Colourpop Love Bug, which again is one of the ones that is slightly closer. So if I swatch that there, it's not exact but it's very very close. 
the last one that I brought over is Bobby Brown Sangria, which is not the same at all, but again, it's one that I might pull in um, for that kind of lip. So, but it's much more kind of ready purple, if you guys can see that. It's got more of that wine tone versus the brownie tone of Cinnabar. So in terms of looking at these, I would say the closest that I've got, Spice is really closely related, but it's like a different intensity. So Spice is very, very similar. Colourpop Love Bug, I would say that's probably, so you can see that at the top and then Lily Seldridge one there. They're close, not exact, but close. Um, but yeah, absolutely no exact dupes. So I have no regrets over the lip liner purchases. I also have no arm strength because my arm is quite sore holding it up there. Whilst I was formatting my card and all of that nonsense, um, just to give you an update on the broken lipstick situation, Jack from Lisa's team, so as I say, they took my order number uh, and said they would get replacement and I have now been sent a follow-up message saying, thank you so much for providing me with your order number. I have now organised a replacement to be sent out to you with priority shipping, um, which I got free shipping on my order, but it was just free standard shipping. So I didn't even pay for priority shipping the first time around. And they've also given me a tracking link. So it is five to two at this point. So, and I, that lipstick broke some way around just after 12 o'clock. So within two hours, my message has been read, responded to, dealt with and I've been given a tracking link like that is customer service so although no it was not ideal that the lipstick broke you cannot complain like that is that is, I mean I'm blown away like two hours turned around and I have a tracking link for my replacement lipstick like that is mad so that's just a, a very mind-blowingly good update in terms of the customer service levels that you get with Lee Seldridge. Anyway, as I said, it is now five to two. So that means this lipstick has been on for about two hours. So I'm going to insert the footage of me first applying it so that you can see me applying it, see me how I applied it. And then we're going to talk about how it looks at the moment and how it's worn. Okay, so this is my first time ever applying this lipstick. So that's it straight from the bullet. Obviously I have the lip liner which I'm going to use to um, kind of perfect it a bit. The colour is really really pretty. I really really like the colour. I feel like, and I'm not sure if I'm just going a bit mad, but I feel like this feels thicker and creamier than the other velvets that I've got. I'm sorry if you can, there's a bird going absolutely mad. Um, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. It doesn't feel like it's wet or like it's going to move or anything, but I feel like it feels a little kind of more dense um, in formula on the lips. I feel like I can feel it a little bit more, but that could also just be that the other ones I've got, I've now had for a year, so maybe they're just a little drier. Um, so this just feels a bit creamier because it's new. But yeah, I really like the colour, so I'm going to try the lip liner now. Don't know what that bird is up to. Just kind of try to sort of diffuse the edges a little bit with my finger. Um, I don't know if you saw when I was doing that there, some of it did move. So I think this is definitely creamier than the other velvets that I've got. And now somebody's car alarm is going off. What in hell? It's a Sunday. This is not supposed. Things are supposed to be calm on a Sunday. Anyway, let's see. Uh, so not much has come off when I blotted it. To be fair, so that is it. Sort of blotted, and this is the matching uh, Cinnabar Enhance and Define Lip Pencil. Okay, so that's it tidied up with the lip pencil. Let's zoom it in. So I do have a spot here, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, I definitely feel it's creamier. I feel like the corners are a little bit messy. Um, and I talked about this in my last Lee Seldridge video. So if I 
um, stop talking and kind of indicate, show you what happens with the corners of my mouth is they sort of rest on top of each other so if I don't put colour there it kind of disappears. I should have probably demonstrated that before I applied anything. Um, but then what happens because they kind of almost seem to come in and rest on each other is that if a product is particularly creamy it kind of almost physically is being pushed out and the corners become a little bit mm, so it's that's my issue with my lips and I feel like my first impressions of Lisa's formula last year in that video very specifically when I applied them right out to the corner the product wasn't dense enough that it was doing that so it was staying quite neat but the colour was there that was what I loved so much about the formula um, and I feel like this is definitely a thicker formula um, or to get it to the colour payoff I've had to apply more of it maybe is the way to put it um, but I do really love the colour and that is the lip liner having kind of tidied it up a bit so I'm going to have to use a little bit of concealer just to clean up this bit here. So I've just used, this is the MAC Studio Fix concealer on uh, Real Techniques small brush and I've just laid that product there. So there we go. I feel like the lip liner is definitely slightly darker than the lipstick so I'm going to go back in with a touch more lipstick just to deepen up the lipstick colour. And although I blotted it you saw how little came off when I blotted it so I don't think it's because I've blotted off the majority of the colour or anything like that. Now usually I would have applied lip liner first, that's how I generally like to work, um, but when I watch Lisa's video she goes in with the lipstick first and then uses the lip liner to sort of fix it, which I suppose you probably use less product and waste less product that way, so I see the benefits and that's, I thought since it was her product I'd do it her way. Uh, oh there we go, the colour's kind of matching in better now that I've just top this up a little bit. Kind of avoiding the corners just to not make a mess of them again. Okay, so that is the mouth on and um, I really really like it. I knew I was going to really like that colour. Uh, I feel like actually as much as I said it was quite creamy when I put it on, I feel like it has started to feel like it's set almost a little bit. Um, not in an uncomfortable way like it's pulling on my lips but I feel like it's sort of found its place so maybe if I just kept my mouth open a little while and sort of let it set and then you know moved my mouth it would have been all right um but yeah no it feels it feels a bit more secure now even just a minute or so later hmm. so in terms of what is already on my face I've got Estee Lauder double wear foundation on I have powdered I use the makeup forever powder um, and I've used Charlotte Tilbury's Sculpt and Glow Highlight and Contour Set. So I have powdered my face. There are face powder and highlight and contour uh, powder products on. So if I thought about it, I wouldn't have done that because I think what I'm going to do is just see how this lipstick goes as a cream blush as well. Just for science, for the sake of the video. Had other lipsticks work really quite well as cream blushes. Uh, so let's... Let's see. Tiny dot. It's actually it's um it's blending all right on top of the powder, which I wasn't really expecting it to do. So there it is as a blush on this side of my face, but not on this side, so this side's got no blush, this side's got the lipstick, just a touch of it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's blending out quite prettily as a blush colour as well. I am not going to take it near my eyes, so this is it on mouth and lips. I'm going to go do my eye makeup, nothing very exciting, um, and just show you the kind of finished full face. So to finish off the rest of my face, I've used the Benefit Cabrow um, in shade number 3 in my eyebrows. And then on my eyes I've used the Guerlain Christmas palette from last year and I used these shades here so this is all over, this is on my lid, this is through my crease and slightly under my eye and then this is on the lid as well so um, trying to kind of take that sort of warm tone continued through the eye without making it a lip and eye look. The mascara is the 
Urban Decay Perversion Mascara that I've been trying to finish for about 100 years at this point. Um, but as I always say with this mascara, it's super wet and smudgy, so I've gone over it with the DHC, which is a tubing mascara, um, just to try and lock it in place a little bit, because I've got quite a lot of things to do today, so I don't want my mascara smudging all over the place. I feel like I maybe need a touch more colour on my cheeks so that I don't just look incredibly pale, even though I am incredibly pale, so it, it, it's truthful, but... Uh, yeah, I feel like I need to, now that I've got the eye on as well, I need to pump the cheek up a little more. So I'm going to go back in with the lipstick. That's a bit better, isn't it? And yeah, texture-wise it is blending even on top of the powders. That's much better. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes I feel like, especially if you know you want to wear a certain lip, doing the lip first, then a bit of a cheek, then the eye, and then maybe going back to the cheek to make sure things are balanced is a good way to do it. Um, yeah, okay, I think I'm quite pleased overall with the way that my face looks. And yeah, the lipstick hasn't kind of moved about or smudged or anything at this point. So it is now 12.04 exactly. I would say it maybe took me like 15 minutes to do everything else so the lipstick's probably been on since about 11.50 at this point um, so yeah I'm gonna go I've got lots of other bits and pieces to film for both this video and project pan updates so I'm gonna go get started on that and then we'll do a check-in in terms of how this lipstick is wearing throughout that filming which obviously involves a lot of talking a lot of moving my mouth um, so we'll see how it endures so my makeup has now been on for about two hours I think I said the lipstick was on by about 10 to 12 so it's now basically two o'clock so if i come up close so you can see the lip liner hasn't bladed anything even when i've slightly overdrawn with it has um set in place you can see a little bit um of like fading on the corners but as i said like that area like the top of my like my top lip rests on my bottom lip. I know that sounds a bit strange because so does everybody's, but like, you know, you can see the way that the shape of my mouth kind of makes that happen. So I feel like the lip liner definitely is darker, but I've now, I've shown you them swatched next to each other and it's not. I think it's just the way that, because I've used Lisa's technique and applied the lipstick first. I think if I'd use the liner first, what I tend to do is line my lips and then I would sort of use my finger to almost diffuse the lip liner a little bit because this is probably more of a sort of structured lip than I would generally do. And that is partly because I've got that slightly kind of odd problem at the side of my mouth. So I think a more relaxed lip shape is better on me anyway. Um, so I think I will go back to doing my lip liner first. And then when I smudge it out, I also kind of smudge it over my lips a little bit. So there's probably a more even base coat of colour for the lipstick to then go on the top of when I do it my way. But I'm glad I did it this way, but you, you can definitely see, uh, like, although the lipstick's wearing really evenly and it's definitely very much still in place, you know, if I stand back, it doesn't, you know, from a distance, it doesn't look bad at all. It's just when I get kind of right close up and you're seeing, you know, that kind of level of detail. So I have some other videos to film now and I am probably going to top it up but before I do that let's do the drinking test. This is my Diet Coke that I've had poured for over two hours since before I did my makeup so it's probably really flat uh, but I will have a drink and we'll see if there's a transfer. So that hasn't really moved the lipstick so what I sometimes find particularly with creamy formulas like the NARS one if I drink from a glass and I'm tipping it up, like, if the edges of the glass rest here and here, I almost get, like, the outline of the glass and lipstick moves, uh, like, in two small lines there and there. And that's not happened. It gets faded a little bit, particularly in the, in my top lip there. Although it has faded there, it's, it's worn really evenly and it doesn't look faded in particular, I think it's just the darkness of the lip liner kind of is emphasising that. That's what two hours wear on it. 
looks like it's certainly not disappeared. I would say my bottom lip um, is is pretty perfect actually. It's just the top lip has a little bit of, of wearing, um, which maybe I'm more expressive with my top lip. I don't know. I do have two other videos to film and I don't really want to film them exactly like this so I am going to top the lipstick up a little bit. Okay, so there's me sort of topped it up. So it tops up pretty well on top of itself. You know, sometimes if you try and build up like, say a liquid lipstick, for example, it can get a bit, mm, if, if the under layer has set and you're trying to top it up, like you really just need to take it off. Um, so that's, that's not happened. Although, as I said, I felt like this was quite creamy and then it felt like it almost sort of set. Um, it's not set to that point that nothing could go over the top of it. So it is now seven minutes past two. As I said, I have two other videos that I want to film, so I'm going to get on with filming them. Then I'm probably going to edit everything that I filmed for this video so far, and then we'll do another check-in later, just to see how it's worn second time around, see how many hours you kind of can get out of it. Um, and then I will hopefully be uploading this video today as well. So. I will see you in my next check-in. It is 20 past five, so it's three hours and 20 minutes or so later than the last check-in. I have filmed two more videos and I have edited the first part of this video. Um, so looking at this lipstick now, it's not looking brilliant. So you can see it's kind of faded again in the middle. The lip liner is like, where that lip liner went, that lip liner has laid its head and is staying. Um, so the lip liner is like super long wearing. My lips don't feel at all uncomfortable. I am very aware there is product on them. I like a matte lip, so it doesn't bother me and it, it's not uncomfortable. But if you're somebody who wants to feel like they've got nothing on their lips, this probably isn't for you. Whereas I would say the velvets that I had last year were super, super comfortable to the point that you could kind of forget you were wearing them. Whereas I feel aware that I have product on my lips at the moment doesn't bother me but just it's something to be aware of um but if you look at my lips you can see as well it's kind of sunk into some of the lines on my lower lip um as well which is maybe not you guys can see that properly not really what we're we're hoping for at the best of times I do think that might not have been as bad if I hadn't topped it up I think maybe if I'd taken off what I'd had on around the two o'clock mark and just started again. That might not be as bad because I, f I feel like that's when I, it was when I topped it up. I think that's when I began to feel a bit more aware of how much product I was wearing. I think lip liner first, smudge it out the way that I usually would do it and then going in with lipstick is the way to use these. I definitely wouldn't say that I wouldn't recommend this even given the break, their customer service have fixed it. And I like the colour. Also Lisa Eldridge is cruelty free, MAC is not. But as I'd said already, if the if the customer service hadn't replaced it, I wouldn't have repurchased it. I would have just stuck with having Mac Marrakesh. But Mac Marrakesh is a matte formula anyway. So if you're not going to like this in terms of formula, you're probably not going to like Marrakesh either. And you'd maybe be better going down the route of Nars Mona, which was the sort of closest I would say um, that wasn't like a matte matte formula. So that is where we are at this point. I haven't had anything to eat or drink since. I had some of that Diet Coke earlier, um, which I showed you guys to see we tested if the glass was going to move the product. What I'm going to do is leave this as it is, I'm not going to bother fixing it. You've seen it as it is, I'm going to make my dinner and then I'm going to check in with you after that just to show you how eating affects it. Okay, it is half past six, it is super dark outside so I'm really sorry this is not um, good lighting just overhead for me and my eye shape. My ring light is away in storage somewhere due to the previously discussed bedroom makeover. Um, but I've now had my dinner. The lighting's not accurate so don't look at this as a, an accurate colour representation but it gives you an idea of where. So it's, see to be fair I don't actually know if it's all that worse than it was before I went so you can really see that the lip liner has stayed in place you know, around the, the edges, 
uh, but the lipstick itself has worn off worn off a little more patchily than other colours that I have in this formula and I think although mine has been broken from what they've said that's to do with it being dunted about it's not that it's a bad batch or anything like that I've seen other people that that has happened to and there's a girl whose project pan I follow Victoria somebody and it happened to her and people on Instagram and things so it's not unheard of and I don't think it's that there's anything wrong with this batch or that this formula is different I think it's it's just this colour in this formula is slightly different to the other colours that I have. So yeah, that's how it's worn having had, uh, I had a stir fry so I did have a sauce uh, with it but it wasn't the messiest of dinners. Not really stood up to that. I don't feel this has got the longevity or the sort of nice wearing off that the other velvets have and I feel like overall I'd probably recommend MAC Marrakesh over this if I was being totally honest. Sorry I know like the, the extreme close-ups are quite a lot but when I stand back I'm under this horrid over lighting which is not fun. Um, So yes in terms of if you can see the shadows in my eyes there just now it's because of my eye shape and the way that the light's coming down um, and I'm actually booked in to get under eye filler. So if that's of interest, I will probably do a video about that. So do hit subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I mean, well done if you've made it to this point in the video and you're not even a subscriber of mine, like, well done you. <laughs> but yeah, so th that is coming as uh, some under eye filler that I'm getting to hopefully deal with the, the hollows under my eyes, which has just come up because you can see how they disappear when the light's coming onto them or when there was light earlier and it comes on, but how they really like catch and let shadows lie in there if, uh, if it's not flattering lighting. Given how terrible I look, we're just going to wrap this video up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Any other questions, leave them down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!